Welcome back everybody. In the last video I made where I went over five tips for starting to invest in video games, I said that you should not chase after modern products in hopes of massive future gains. And out of all five points I made in that video, this was the one that actually was a bit of point of contention for some people, with some people putting in arguments that modern is also fine and if you know what you're doing, you're going to do fine in modern. Which, yes, I don't hate modern collecting investing, I like it more though from a short-term flipper mentality, where if you can pick something up at retail and three weeks later it's worth two times, three times as much, then just go sell it. I don't really see the point of holding on long term at that point. But regardless of that, I just want to make this video to better articulate myself as to why I don't feel most people should chase after modern and what I personally don't like about modern. Hopefully this video can explain to you why they are absolute trash and you should burn any that you own. I'm just kidding you guys, modern's great. I'm not saying that modern is bad, but from an investing perspective, I don't see why you would choose it versus going with vintage. And remember, if future value is your only goal with collecting and investing in modern video games, then you also have to consider that you could just go with traditional financial instruments instead of speculative video games. And remember, I am not a financial advisor, this is just one guy's opinion. Do not take financial advice from a guy who can't even afford a shirt. And if you disagree with what I say in this video, put your comment down below. I'm going to read it and I will respond to you. So let's just start by explaining what I mean when I say modern. So with modern games, there is no hard cut line. Different people are going to have different opinions on this. For me, it means anything PS4 and newer. So this is going to be your PS4, your Xbox One, your Switch. The Wii U and the 3DS are right on the cutoff line for me. They are almost what I would consider modern, but I know especially with the Wii U, there was a lot of people speculating already and buying up factory sealed games because they had the notion of, oh, it's a failed console, so that means they're going to be rare, no one's buying them, so then people were buying up factory sealed versions to hold them in anticipation of them being rare. So Wii U kind of gets that modern nod from me, but I understand if you don't want to include it. 3DS is very close, but that's where the cutoff line is for me. So I'm talking PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and anything newer. Now, when we get into why I don't like to collect or invest modern, there's two big fundamental reasons that I want to discuss in this video. And these two big factors are the dilution of the condition premium and inorganic future supply due to current speculation. And keep in mind, of course, there are going to be exceptions to what I say in this video. That's how it works. But if you can pinpoint a few exceptions, it does not mean that the rule is invalid. What I'm about to go over here is fundamental across most collectible categories. Let's get into the first point. Modern games are easier to grade and obtain in mint condition, which means you're going to have far less condition premium on them in the future, which hurts the future appreciation and value. So what the hell am I saying? If we talk about the cardboard era of video games, the outer box is very easy to damage. They're cardboard. And if we talk about N64, they're quite fragile cardboard. And this means that you can get creasing, corner dings, paint flaking, and other forms of damage just from regular handling or even just straight from the factory. For this reason, it's not only factory sealed cardboard games that are very expensive, but mint condition complete and box cardboard games are already starting to pull massive premiums because they're very hard to find. So if we get away from cardboard, we can go into the jewel cases, which is your Sega Saturn, Sega CD, PlayStation 1. Let's take a look at what those cases are. Which, if you already collect for those consoles, you know that there is an insane propensity for them to get cracked. Again, just crack from regular usage and shipping, anything. A pressure crack can happen very easily on these. Therefore, finding them in mint condition can be pretty challenging today. Not as hard as cardboard is, but a factory sealed game that has no cracks in it, especially on the double jewel cases, is quite hard to do, and they do pull premiums. Not everyone you find is going to be mint, and you might have to cycle through some to not find a cracked one. However, if we take it and we go to complete in box instead of sealed, well now it doesn't matter very much because we can just swap out the cases. So now hairline cracks don't matter and the inherent difficulty in finding a mint condition one now comes down to the manual and the disc instead of the actual overall box. For this, cardboard will always hold a premium over jewel cases. I'm sure you're starting to understand now the inherent difficulty of obtaining different types of cases in mint condition. For factory sealed cardboard and jewel cases, the absolute rarity of the game, just finding it in sealed condition, as well as the condition premium of the game, finding it in mint condition, both play heavily into the value of the item. Because it's one thing to find it sealed, and a completely another thing to find it factory sealed mint. And that's very important to distinguish. So now we get to the generation of PlayStation 2, which introduced the DVD style cases, and these are what's still held to modern. I don't think anyone's going to argue that they are pretty protective cases all things considered. I really like the design. It's far better than crushing cardboard or cracking a jewel case. And it's with this generation that the dilution of the condition premium really starts to take effect. 
When we consider sealed DVD style games, there's no real way to just obviously damage it. Regular handling and whatever, you might scuff the case or give little slight indents, but you're not gonna crease a corner or crease the box or dent it. It's far easier for them to survive over time in mint condition or very near mint condition. The seal of the game is far more likely to take bumps, scratches, and bruises than the actual case or boxes. They're quite likely to walk into your local Walmart, buy a game off the shelf, and have it in mint gradable condition. And if we're talking about collecting future value organic scarcity, this is a big issue because if it's not hard to get in mint condition, then it just hurts everything about the item. If every game is mint, then it's no longer special to have a mint condition one. All of a sudden, the absolute rarity of it being sealed, and there's not really a condition premium that you can throw on that. It's either sealed or not, because every sealed one is in mint condition. You see this dilution a lot if you participate in the Pokemon market, where all of a sudden a PSA 10 is basically the standard. It's not even worth having a PSA 8 or 9. Those are basically raw cards. There's no reason to pay for a PSA 9. Just go buy the raw card yourself. And that's where video games are going to get more and more as we keep increasing generations. Especially if people are going to continue to speculate on these current titles in hopes of future gains. All of a sudden in the future, VGA 85 on a modern game is not going to be a good grade. A WADA 9.0 is not going to be a good grade. You see this very strongly in comics as well, where you have to have a 9.6, basically you have to have a 9.8, or there's really no reason of even having it graded. Video games, obviously less printed and have a different inherent use case, We'll get to this point if everyone decides they want to keep theirs in mint condition. If we look at complete and box modern games, now that a lot of them don't even have manuals, there is quite literally no inherent difficulty to finding one in mint condition. And with so many people conscious about collectibles as an investment now, everyone's keeping them in nice condition. This is the first fundamental reason why I don't really like modern collecting and investing. I fear there's going to be too much supply available in mint condition to where no one's going to want to pay a massive premium for it because there's no difficulty to acquisition. The difficulty to acquisition is a lot of what drives the collectible market forward, especially when we talk about vintage and mint items. But that's just my first point. You can let me know how you feel about that. Let's get into the second point of why I don't like modern. And this second point does have to do with the first one as well, but... And it is that the supply of games that are going to survive in sealed and mint condition is going to be far greater than any other generation due to current speculation. Video game collecting isn't new, and neither is sealed video game collecting. I know it's the first time it's really been in the mainstream, it was really this niche hobby before, but people are doing this and have been doing this for quite a while. I was personally buying Wii games when they were the current generation to sit on and hold and wait and have them appreciate in value. People older than me were doing this with GameCube. People older than them were doing it with N64. The more you go back, the more natural the surviving supply is. So in 2019, Wada Games entered the market and everything kind of went insane. All of a sudden, we had everyone buying up anything vintage to try and get graded and sell for more money. We had investors coming in, speculators coming in, the whole market just hit this huge boom. We are now two years into this market euphoria and we have people now buying up anything that has a name brand character on it or a popular IP from continually newer generations. We now have people buying up the 3DS, the PS4, the Nintendo Switch games in hopes of finding the next grail or something that's going to be expensive in the future. And when this type of speculation happens on modern product, the amount of supply that's going to survive becomes inorganic because you have people just sitting on it now. Instead of it being the random unsold stock that might go factory sealed, it's just going to be games that are released and bought to keep sealed. And since most all of these games being bought are going to be mint condition from the factory, we no longer have the absolute rarity of just finding one in sealed condition. We are also losing the conditional rarity since most all of them are going to be mint. When this happens, and depending on how much it happens, the rare becomes common and all of a sudden your sealed price and your opened price are going to become closer and closer together. The reason that factory sealed currently commands such a premium over complete in box is because finding the factory sealed ones are much harder. If there's so much supply of factory sealed, then there's no reason to pay that huge premium on it. So right now, with Switch for example, we have all eyes on everything Mario, everything Zelda, they're all getting bought up and speculated on. What we have is people differentiating UPC codes on the back of Switch games to decide what the first prints are and speculate on those. So if you can't already tell me the first print UPC on Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, then you are already behind the eight ball. The price is starting to get baked in so much that I just don't feel safe buying anything modern at its current price point. If you're buying at retail, I get it, it's a lot more safe, but still, I just don't enjoy it. So this increased supply is going to need increased demand in the future. How much future demand is there going to be for modern generation sealed games? 
I'm not sure. In this bull market we're experiencing, it's really easy to say that of course there's gonna be demand. Look at prices right now. They're gonna be so much higher in the future. Everyone who grew up with these games is gonna to wanna to buy them in the future in sealed form. But as physical media gets pushed more to digital, is the current generation of kids going to wanna to buy these games again in factory sealed form to remember them and be nostalgic with them? They might, but they also might not. And yes, the inherent use of video games will ensure that there isn't just some un endless amount of them that stays factory sealed. That won't happen. But there will have to be someone in the future who wants to own these modern generation games at a premium price due to them already going for premium prices today. If you genuinely love modern video games and just want to buy up some of your favorites, keep them in factory sealed form, go for it. No, do what you want to do. But this is the other reason why I avoid almost all modern collectibles. So let me just summarize both points for you there because that was a lot of information. I don't like to collect and invest in sealed modern video games because one, they are too easy to find in mint sealed condition, and two, there are going to be more surviving copies of these games than we've ever seen before. These two inherent issues are why I like to keep all of my collecting and investing in video games to on the vintage side, where things are far more organic and natural. Now I know there's price manipulation stuff and a whole lot of issues with vintage as well, but for the most part, the amount of supply that exists is organic. If I ever do modern, I just want to kind of get in and out type of thing. If I happen to buy a modern product at retail and a few months later it goes up in price, I'm okay with selling it. I don't want to hold on to it for the long term. That's how I view and handle modern. You can obviously do what you want to do with modern. And hey, like I said, the dude in a tank top talking behind the camera can absolutely be wrong about this. But hopefully this lengthy explanation provided some more context for you for why I don't advise new people in video games just to go chase after modern. There's a lot you have to understand and there's a lot of nuance to the market to make it work for you successfully. If you know what you're doing, go after modern. I'm sure you'll do fine. It's not where I personally like to put my money. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, put your comment down below and let me know how you feel. And I'll see you guys next time. How much demand is going to increase? How much demand is there? How much, how much real collector demand is there going to be in the future? I'm not sure. It's really hard to, how much future demand is there going to be for these? How much future demand is there going to be for factory sealed modern gen games? How much future demand is there going to be for modern generation current?